So welcome back to this latest video on 162 Matt and in this video we'll be going over some past GCSE exam questions related to distance time. Now as always there'll be a copy of the questions that we go through in this video as a link in the description along with lessons that go over this topic in greater detail. Now before we get started working through some past exam questions related to distance time graphs let's just have a quick overview over what it is we need to revise and what it is we need to know. Now the first thing is that time always goes along the horizontal axis so and that's usually because you can't go back in time so that's why it's always the graph is always going forward always starts in zero you're never going to have negative time so just be mindful of that. So time always goes along the x-axis and distance always goes along the vertical axis or the y-axis. The next thing is always make sure you check the scale and the units. Every graph is going to be different, so make sure you're aware of what units you're going to be using and what one little box or one big box um, is equal to. The next thing is steeper diagonals means it's traveling faster. So the gradient is connected to the speed, which is mentioned in the fifth point, um, but a steeper line will refer to that it's moving faster. A flatter line will mean that it's moving slower. Horizontal lines mean that it's stationary and not moving and on a curve because sometimes you do get a distance time graph that's represented by a curve not straight lines that the on the curve the speed is at the point of the gradient of the tangent at that point. So for example if I had let me just do a little quick sketch of a distance time graph so here we've got time and here we've got the distance so let's say we were chucking a ball in the air and it was in the air for five seconds. So if a question asks you to work out the speed after four sec at four seconds, so let's say four is there, then what I would need to do is I need to draw a tangent to the best of my ability at that point and then work out the gradient of the tangent. And often they would accept any answer as long as the tangent line is going in the right direction. So in other words, positive or negative, that's correct. And you're working out the gradient of that tangent that you've drawn will be good enough to get you the full marks. Also, positive gradient means that it's moving further away from the original point. So for example, here, from this side here, it's moving away. Because we've got a positive gradient and on this part here we've got negative gradient because it's going down and that's moving forward or towards in other words returning so just be mindful of that so without further ado let's get started on these questions now a reminder if you want an access to these questions all you need to do is just simply click on the link in the description i strongly recommend you do that and have a attempt to these questions just to see how much you know and how much you don't know about this particular topic. So looking at question one, it says here is a distance time graph and it says match each statement to one section of the journey. So let's talk about average speed, stationary and the fastest part of the journey. So let me just zoom out so we can see it on the screen, which may be difficult if you are working on the screen and not printed it out. And so looking at this, what we want to do is work out the gradient of each of the sections. So for this first section, if I just go over it in blue, so that this that gradient there, so the speed, now remember that speed is equal to distance divided by time, which in other words, which is why it's the gradient. So here the distance traveled is 50 and the time taken is three hours. So it's gonna be 50 divided by three which gives me an answer of 17 point something. And then, so looking at the first one, the gradient of 17 miles per hour, uh, that's going to be A to B. Then we're looking at the other line, so this line here, and the gradient of that, even though it's going back, is got a distance of 25. And that's in one hour, so that's going to be 25 miles per hour. The stationary is C to D, so I can label that now. Then D to E, uh, let's use pink. This distance here is 20 divided by 2, which is 10 miles per hour. And then the last one, E to F 
Well, that's got a distance of 45 and that's in two hours and that's 22.5 miles per hour. So that's going to be the second one. So that's going to be E to F. And the fastest part of the journey is B to C. And there we go. Then moving on to question 1B, it says calculate the distance travelled over the entire journey. So looking at this first bit, so this first bit here is 50 miles. The red one is going from 50 to 25, so that's 25. The green one is 0, because no miles has travelled there. Then the pink one is going from 25 to 45, so that's 20. And then the purple one is going from 45 to 0, so that's 45. So all I need to then do is add up all of those four squared box numbers. So I've got 50 plus 25 plus 20 plus 45, which gives me an answer of 140 miles. So then moving on to question two, it says two trains A and B travel from Manchester to Leeds. Both trains travel at constant speed. Here is a timetable for the trains. Train A travels at a speed of 40 miles per hour. Each train waits at Leeds station 15 minutes before travelling back to Manchester at the same speed. So the question is asking us to draw a distance time graph for trains A and B. Now the one bit of key information is missing is the distance between Manchester to Leeds. So that's the first thing that we need to work out is the distance of Manchester to Leeds. Now to work out the distance, distance is equal to speed times time. So looking at train A, we're looking at the time being 1 hour 15 minutes. Now we need to make sure that we write using only one unit, not hours and minutes. So we're going to work in hours. So another way of writing one hour, 15 minutes is saying one and a quarter hours, which is 1.25 hours. And the speed we know is 40 miles per hour. So the distance is going to be 40 multiplied by 1.25 and that equals 50. So the distance between Manchester and Leeds is 50 miles. So then using this information and the timetable, we can now plot our diagram or chart or line graph, whichever you prefer to call it. So if looking at train A, it leaves at 9 and arrives in Leeds at 10.15. So one little box going across is 15 minutes. So the distance is 50. So it's going to be 10.15, which is just there. So all I then need to do is draw a straight line from there. Then it then says that the train waits at the station for 15 minutes, which is one block, in which I'll do that freehand. And then it's going to take another hour and 15 minutes, so that's five blocks. And it will return back to Manchester at 11.45 which is just there and let me just neaten that line up like so so that is the time distance graph for train A then for train B it leaves at 10 o'clock so 10 o'clock is here it gets to Manchester in one hour so it's going to arrive at 11 o'clock so then I just need to draw a straight line from 10 to 11 traveling 50 miles that also waits for 15 minutes so it's just one little box and then we'll arrive back at Manchester at 12.15 And so your time distance graph should look something like that. And there we go. Then moving on to question three, it says that Brian visits a library. He cycles to the library at a speed of 18 miles per hour. He stays at the library for a period of time. He then cycles home. 
and the question is asking work out the speed in miles per hour at which Brian cycles home. So for this what we need to do is first of all work out the total distance. So the distance of home to the library is speed times time. So using this information we know that the speed is 18 miles per hour and we know that the time is half an hour. So that's going to be 0 0.5 hours. So 18 times 0 0.5 gives us a distance of 9 miles. So then from this we can then work out the speed of the return journey. So the return journey is going to be distance divided by time. So the distance is 9. The time taken is 45 minutes. Now 45 minutes equals 3 quarters of an hour which is uh, 0.75 hours. So it's going to be 0.75. Now if you're not, if you always struggle with converting minutes to hours just have the minutes divided by 60 and that will give you the time in hours. So again if you had like for example if you had 130 minutes and you wanted to convert that into hours just do 130 divided by 60 which is going to be 13 over 6 which gives me an answer of 2.16 recurring hours. So that's just one way of converting minutes into hours. So then going back to the question then 9 divided by 0 0.75 gives me an answer of 12 miles per hour. Speed demon. Then moving on to question 4 it says that a ball is thrown vertically upwards. The graph shows the height of the ball above the ground after it is thrown. And it says for part A for how many seconds is the ball at a height of more than 3 metres? Well 3 metres is here. So I'm looking for the time in which that black line is above that orange dotted line. So looking at it this time here is at 0.3 and this point here is at 2.7. So for part A it's going to be 2.7 minus 0.3 which equals 2.4 seconds. Then for part B it says after how many seconds is the ball at the same height at which it was thrown. So again looking at the curve it was thrown from 2 meters so if I draw a horizontal line, it's going to be, and then as soon as it's a curve, read down to look at the time, and that's after three seconds. Then moving on to 4C, it says work out the average speed of the ball when it is moving downwards. So when it's moving downwards is basically at this point here. So if I just use a different color, so what I need to do is I need to work out the gradient of this point here to this point here. So to work out the speed, so if I just write to C here, so the speed is equal to the distance, so it's travelled 4.6 meters, and then the time is from 1.5 seconds to 3.5 seconds, so the time difference is 2 seconds. So then the speed is going to be 4.6 divided by 2, which is 2.3, and the units are meters per second. Then moving on to our last question, it says the graph shows the height above ground of two toy rockets, A and B, for 10 seconds. And for 5A, it says how much higher did rocket A travel than rocket B? Well, looking at the peak of each of those particular points, so this peak here is using the scale I make it out to be about 11.2 and the peak for B is I would say 9. So then taking away the two numbers we've got 11.2 minus 9 gives me an answer of 2.2 and that's going to be meters. Then for B it says which rocket spent longer in the air and by how much time. So for this all we need to do is work out the time 
for rocket A, which looking at it is going from zero to seven, so that's seven seconds. And then for rocket B, it's going from four to 10. So that's gonna be, so the time for rocket B is gonna be six seconds. So the difference is rocket B by one second. Now moving on to the last part, it says which rocket had the greatest speed at four seconds into their respective journey? So four seconds into for rocket A is this point here. So then if I then draw a tangent at that line, again, making sure you use a ruler, I get that. And four seconds for rocket B, that's gonna be eight seconds. So I'm looking at this point here. And if I draw a tangent, I'm looking at that there. So what I then need to do for part C is then, if I just talk you through the points, is for rocket A, draw a tangent at x equals four, and then find the gradient. Then for rocket B, draw a tangent at x equals eight, and then find the gradient. And then basically we're looking for which one's gonna be quicker, but it's of pretty obvious which line of the purple line and the blue line is steeper. Well, it's gonna be B. So the answer then is gonna be B is steeper. And there we go.